Recording. Oh. Last is a shot. Here he scores! Make it a lucky 13 consecutive games with a point for the Ghosts. Simmons. Simmons in front of the shot. They score! Braden Shen to the laser. Off the feed from behind the net. And the power play goal as the Flyers on top. 2-1. To and now Voracek across ice. Here's Giroux in. Giroux swerving to the middle. Off to Shen. Shen in front. They score! Simmons! Jamming it home! Power play goal! It's 3-2 Philadelphia! Now a turnover in the shot by the Flyers. The save made by Schneider. Another try. They score in front! Nick Cousins! And Voracek moves up at a two-on-one. Voracek with the puck. He's got Giroux. Voracek to shot. He scores! Jake Voracek beat Schneider. And the Flyers have erupted for three. And have a 5-2 lead. Now, Andy Robb, Ken Prell, the Philly Hockey Guys. Please clap. All right. I like thank you. Audio. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> so great. How you doing? <laughs> Welcome to the Philly Hockey Guys podcast, episode number 33. 33? The Brian Boucher episode, we'll call this one. That's right. Boucher was 33, yeah. wasn't he? Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Also, we can talk about maybe 33-year-old players who may be uh, rumored to possibly be going to the Penguins. See Hartnell, comma, Scott. Let's start with that real quick because we just saw that today okay, on Eklund. Yeah, Eklund uh, has that as one of his rumors that the Pens are interested in adding Hartnell. I don't know how they do it uh, because of salary cap. I mean, Hartnell's yeah. owed $4.5 million, so. 4.75, I think, okay. over the uh, next three, three years. years. So, yeah, so I, I doubt that. I would really hate to see Hartnell in Pens colors. That would uh, that's just not right. Now that he's in Columbus, does he still have a no move clause? Because I know that he waived that when he was in Philadelphia to go to Columbus. Does it still apply that he's with the Jackets? That's a good question. I'm not sure how the uh, how that contract works. Once you waive it once, does it and just waive it all? Because I, I I just don't see him going there. I don't see him really getting along with people there either. Yeah, if he could block it or I. Honestly, I don't see Columbus making a deal with no, Pittsburgh either. No, that's either. another thing. I, I don't see them making a deal with them either. So, anyway, that's the rumor that we saw. Take it with a grain of salt. Take it for whatever it's worth, which, in my opinion, probably isn't worth that much. Well, the trade deadline's less than, what, two weeks away? Yeah, So, much, we're yeah. going to see a bunch of crazy rumors come out over these next two weeks. Coming up on the show, uh, that's one of the things we're going to talk about, uh, some uh, – Upcoming moves that the Flyers could make, and we've already talked about that briefly on some of our other shows. Uh, Don't forget, subscribe on iTunes. And also on SoundCloud. You can follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Philly Hockey Guy. And don't forget, our contest is still up and running throughout the month of February. You can win a prize pack from us with that uh, starting lineup Eric Lindros figurine. So enter today. Here's a good one for you. Here's a very interesting one. Before we get into everything with the show, a uh, very cool announcement to make uh, regarding our friends and neighbors on Reddit Flyers. I said uh, the other day that we were going to mention this on the podcast. Now, uh, if you're not a member of Reddit, if you're not on Reddit Flyers, that's fine. Uh, this is really a call out to all Flyer fans. Coming up on Saturday, this coming Saturday, uh, Blinson and, of course, uh, user R35H93, another uh, friend of the podcast, there is going to be an AMA on Reddit Flyers with the one, the only, Brian Prop. 10 a.m. on Reddit Flyers is going to be uh, logged in very cool. and answering fans' questions. That's phenomenal. That is that is very cool. So the account for it is uh, Reddit user Flyers-AMA-account. And, uh, yeah, this Saturday, 10 a.m., mark it on your calendar with a big red star. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to miss it. I'm absolutely. No, it's going to yeah. be pretty cool. Oh, absolutely. Fant- absolutely. Yep. So, uh, shout out to uh, Blinson and a user R35H93 from Reddit Flyers for setting that up and uh, continuing to prove that why it's one of the greatest uh, fan bases out there on the internet today. And also on the subject of uh, you know fan groups on the internet today. I got to tell you, man, over these last like few days, there has really been quite an abundance of rage inducing Facebook comments that have been coming out. Some I, I just can't believe some people suggesting trading Giroux, some people suggesting I forget one of the other ones that was on there, but it was just ridiculous what it well, was. I, I mean, I can somewhat understand it. I can somewhat see it. I mean, after this past weekend, 
uh, with the Devils and the Rangers. You know, you lose both those games. You only get one point out of the weekend. I understand the uh, the frustration, but yeah, some of the uh, <laughs> some of the comments you really just got to laugh at them at this point because they will drive you absolutely insane. So a new segment of that uh, slash Mason's morons <laughs> will be coming soon. All right, so uh, game time. Yeah, Flyers we, Devils. We briefly talked about the two losses, and that's all we really need to mention about those this sure, past yeah, weekend. Yeah. But uh, man, the offense exploded the other night. Yeah. Wow, they really, uh, Braden Shen, that line really, you know, coming into yeah. their own again. You're beating up on the Devils who who don't give up a lot of goals. They, Always seems to yeah, have our number. Exactly. Yeah. Play that stupid trap style or whatever. I mean, I don't understand it. Coaches change, GMs change, players change, yet they, the Devils still play the most boring brand of hockey and ever seen a, on ice. And yet it's enough to beat us. Well, yeah, it's, it's yeah. crazy. It's... Coming out with a you know a six three win. I mean, they really uh, turned it on after a while, and the scoring just started and wouldn't let up. And Giroux having a fantastic showing. Giroux three assists, twelfth um, career game with having three assists or more. So he's on fire. Forty nine points now on the season. You mentioned the lines, Hackstall mixed them up a little bit the other night, and it obviously worked out very well. Yeah. Bumped up Shen to the first line to uh-huh. team up with uh, Simmons and Giroux. And then Cousins, Umberger, and Voracek on that second line. And Umberger looked like a competent player. Cousins, Cousins end up scoring a goal Kinda again. Kind of coming into his, his second. own. Yeah. And uh, Voracek. Voracek had a great game. Yeah, I mean, it's great to see, um, you know, all across the board. It was a great effort, but they got to keep that going. You know, you can't just, you can't ease up. Well, we said, you know, it was the last two weekends have been lost weekends as far as getting points. So, uh, you know, every point counts. And the to actually go into a game and actually win it in regulation and not go to overtime and still, you know, give a point to somebody who you're chasing, it, it was a big win for the Flyers. So nice job all around the other night. Absolutely. And, of course, we have to talk about uh, that one guy, that one player. He's, he's a young guy. He plays defense, and he's, he's kind of good. I don't know if I know who you're talking about. Shane uh, Grass Grasswis Mayor. Oh, Grasshopper. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk about the Ghost Bear because man, unbelievable, man. Oh, man! If this, if this, if this young man is not considered for the Calder Trophy this year, I will have some questions, and I, I would write an angry letter, and I might actually consider mailing it. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, you know, well, of course, the streak has now gone to 13 games. It's 11 goals it's on the season already. You just can't believe that the Flyers have a defenseman this good. And I love when they, when they sit down and they talk to him and they interview him. Uh, when he got the goal the other night, he gave all the credit to Simmons. Yeah, I mean, it's like we said on uh, the last episode of the show. I mean, that's the kind of person that you want to build a team around. It's a guy that's a leader that, you know— you know, wants to share the glory, you know, so much. It was just like the other day when he was talking about, oh, is he going to, you know, break that streak record? He's like, oh, it would be nice. But the main matter is that, you know, it's for the team. Yeah, I mean, he's still saying, he's saying, oh, yeah, this is great. This is awesome and all, but we got to get these two points. Yeah, can we also say <laughs> how not, how awesome it's been now that he's starting to get a lot more um, – National attention in the hockey world, not just in America, but in uh, in Canada, because apparently uh, he did an interview uh, with TSN uh, the other day, and uh, more and more people are starting to talk about Shane Gostisbehere, the most exciting player in the NHL right now, the most exciting rookie by far, I think, yes. right now. Yep. I mean, you got. I mean, Eichel's great too. I mean, and so is McDavid. But like somebody that's just been, you know, put on a consistent showing, game after game, night after night. I feel like Gostas Bear stands alone. Well, those guys were expected to be highlight reels. Sure. Right, Ghost right, wasn't. Right, right. So to come up and to be able to do what he's done this year, it, it's just been phenomenal and fun to watch. More than fun to watch, especially when he gets on that three-on-three. And uh, earlier, you just mentioned uh, Wayne Simmons. We kind of skipped over him real quick. Wayne Simmons uh, scoring the goal that started the final push for the game and uh, also got himself an assist on that night. Yeah, Once again, know, another great showing for him. 21 goals on the season. That was his 10th power play goal this year. I mean, the guy is is unstoppable. He's a weapon. He yeah. really is. I and mean, and they know him, how to use him the right yep, way. You pair him with Giroux. You put him on the power play. You know, you look at the way that he really comes out and he shows Hard every game. That's why, you know, that Montreal stuff doesn't scare me. That's why I think that, you know, he is definitely part of the long term plans, according to Ron Jeffrey Hextall. Yeah, I don't think he's going anywhere. 
But with that said, you could get a nice return. That you if, could. If, if you, I don't if, care about it. Yeah, yeah. I'm not even going to comment on that. <laughs> See? I, I, it's Dave's nonsense. right. Yeah, he's it's right. Nonsense. He's right. I know what I want to talk about. Braden Shen. You know, he, he got put up to the first line, had a great game the other night. Do you think not having Luke on the team has kind of unburdened him? Because ever since then, since January, really, January 1st, he's been on fire. My serious answer, no. But my non-serious answer, yes, because as we talked about in the other shows, Luke and Brayden are going head-to-head to win their parents' love and a pony for whoever <laughs> does better. I still think Mama Shen's like, come on, boys, play your best, you know? Play your pony. Why, why is Mama Shen like 93 years old? I don't know how old she is. <laughs> I, so I, you don't think it has anything to do with the trade? I think it's just a... a a very crazy coincidence that it works out like this. I think he knows that he's a restricted free agent and kn- knew he had to kick it in the high gear. And put on a show. Yes. <laughs> uh, okay. Six uh, goal in the last ten games. Which I one mean, do you think is more realistic? Because of his brother or because of that? I think it's the contract. You think it's the contract? Yes. <laughs> which uh, kind of raises that question uh, that we kind of just uh, touched on with Simmons. Part of the long-term plan, do you think? Especially with this uh, kind of resurgence he's had? Is this the real Braden Shen? That's my question, because we've seen flashes of this over the past couple seasons, and, but then there's also times where he disappears for a month or so. You know, you forget he's even on the team. So. I don't think he's had um, a showing that has been this consistent and good no, in this, a while. This has been... Uh, what he's done, uh, like I said, since January 1st has been uh, unreal. I mean, he's been that player that we thought we were getting a couple years ago when we traded for him. Uh, if that's the guy, then, yeah, you want to keep him around. He's still young. Uh, he he's also hasn't been under shuffled, 25. He also hasn't been shuffled around as yeah. nearly as much as when uh, Craig Bruby was there. Oh, yeah. Well, I think that's, that's also a, a very good point. So I, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is with Braden Chen at this point. I think you see how the rest of the season goes. I trust Hextall to make the right move. Either maybe he, he trades him or um, they just they put an offer out there, see if anybody uh, will match that offer. I, I mean, you yeah. can always do that as well. Yeah, I mean, but it's like we said before. I mean, you know, it's all just up in the air. Nobody really knows what goes through that man's head. So whatever Hextall does, we kind of just have to... Deal with it. That's why he's the GM, and we're just two guys with a microphone. It's true. That's why he gets the big bucks for. <laughs> speaking of speaking of big bucks and being in the media, did you see that the Phillies with uh, spring training starting off? Howard Eskin went down and rented a Maserati in Florida to drive around. He's the king, right? <laughs> he's, he's the, the king. king. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, yeah. That's all I got. Yeah. We, what about when he wears that uh, when he wears that fur coat and he looks like putty on that episode <laughs> of Seinfeld? You know, if you look on eBay, you can actually find a bobblehead of him wearing a fur coat. Of Putty? No, of Howard Eskin. Shut up. No, I swear. Go ahead. Go take a look. All right. All right. We're going to have to Google this then. Yep. All right. Uh, You know, I'm going to put a bid in it for you and buy it for you as a present. Oh, my God. You are not kidding. Holy crap. It's $40. What the hell? We pay $40 for that. Wait a minute. Wait. This is on eBay. So this is only one of them. One of these is going for thirty five. Oh man. Look at look at this one. A hundred dollars for a Howard Eskin fur coat bobblehead? Why? Why are you crazy? Exist? Are you out of your mind? Wow. <laughs> a Zin oh it's Zinman Furs oh, promotional well, bobblehead yeah. with Howard Eskin. Good lord. <laughs> Well, that's it for the show. Yep, the end of the world is near now. I mean, I don't know if I'd necessarily say the end of the world per se. I mean, if it, but if it was, or if it will be, we'll know when it happens. No, it's end times. Oh, all right then. <laughs> all right, moving on. Uh, Radko Gudis. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh. <laughs> Oh, man. You know, as much as I love this song, I'm kind of getting tired of this bit. Yo, Rad Kuguda, stop getting into trouble. Exactly. If you play a little smarter, we wouldn't have to play this music. Yeah, really. Okay, so what happened during that game uh, against the New Jersey Devils uh, with Rad Kuguda? Well, of course, he goes again and gets a uh, game misconduct, gets ejected uh, eight minutes into the game, so the Flyers then shorthanded. Wait, hang on. So he was, a, yeah. So the Flyers were shorthanded, uh, only playing with five defensemen then for most of the game. So, uh, I mean, uh, 
we were big fans of this guy early on in the season. He was our our Twitter picture. Yeah, for a long time. This yeah, season. and now I mean it's like. <sighs> I, I don't know. It's it's a strange case uh, with a guy like Rad Kugudas, especially because, you know, there hasn't been hearings. I mean, the, everything's been ruled clean hits, but everyone thinks he's... Yeah, even the hit the other night was yeah. kind of shoulder to shoulder, but it was unnecessary. Exactly. You I mean, it doesn't really... breeze a chance to, to make those kind of calls. Right. I mean, it doesn't really contribute to much. I mean, but... <laughs> I mean, it doesn't, though. No, I mean, it, it doesn't, doesn't help the team, you know... And some people are like, oh, well, uh, you know, every time he's taken a penalty like that, we've won a game. Like, yeah, what I guess he... every time he's been thrown out, the the he... 4 no. Is he the new game changer like Zach Ronaldo was? Well, see, that's what I'm worried about. That's what he's turning into. And you know my dis- my hatred for uh, <laughs> for old Zachy boy. So, and, and I don't want, uh, uh, you know, Gudis is just going down that path. And it's, it, again, it's not doing anything good for the Flyers. And we asked the question on Reddit Flyers about uh, Rad Kugudis. Good energy guy or risk-taking goon? And uh, we've got some responses on Reddit Flyers about that. Cake-covered potato ski says, I feel like during the beginning of the season, he was playing the best hockey of his career with Del Sato. When he is playing well, he's intimidating and physical, and I think he can really embody the spirit of the Flyers. However, ever since the All-Star break, he's been playing bad hockey and doing stupid things like last night. I've consistently defended Gudis, saying that he isn't a dirty player, but last night proved me wrong. It wasn't a predatory hit per se, but it was dirty to blindside a guy like that, even if it was Farnham. Yeah, I mean, that's basically what we've been saying. I I completely agree. Yeah, and that's and he also kind of touches on that same uh, idea when he wraps it up, and he says, That being said, I really think Gudis can be a valuable asset with this team moving forward if... He cleans up his act. He'd be a good second, third pairing guy to have while we're slowly integrating all the horsemen. Yeah, but here's the thing. I mean, Hextall and Hackstall already had a talk with him, telling him that he had to calm down. It's two games later, and he's out there doing the same crap again. Real disappointed. Yeah. (laughs) And uh, JL Hockey Night says in response to that, he says, Frankly, I'm surprised there is no hearing. And at this point, every ref in the league is going to be watching him, Gudas, under a microscope. Again, not going to help the team. Yeah, I've seen a lot of other comments on on Facebook and Twitter and and from stories about Gudas and you know, saying that you you need these type of guys like a uh, like a Scott Stevens type, John Scott. Yeah, but it's a different game now. Those guys, they're not needed as much. So uh, again, no, I agree. I agree. Uh, is it worth is it worth having a guy on the team where he's going to constantly put you shorthanded? I can't really say. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt this time around. But you know, I know that he's listening. So knock it off. <laughs> Well said. We said before, it's like, how many times can one dodge a bullet? It's like, dude, one of these days, you're going to have a hearing, and you are going to get suspended, and that's going to put that team in even a worse place. And especially now, because you can't be playing shorthanded with defensemen when you have Strait, Schultz, and McDonald as three of your defensemen on this team right now. Strait looks older than dirt at this point. Uh, I don't know how much he's got left in the tank. So. It's time to buckle down and keep winning. It's time to get serious. It's time, you know, if you want it, you know, it's like the coach said in the movie Goon. He's like, do you want to make the playoffs or not? Like, do you or don't you? The playoffs, they're, they're in reach right now, you know, but they got to step it up here. I mean, they're down, what, uh, six points out of the uh, final playoff yeah, spot, the final wild card spot. Yeah, there's basically like no and you're room chasing for a bunch air. of you're chasing a bunch of teams. Uh both the Pens and Lightning are tied for that last spot and then you still have Carolina and the Devils. So y- you can't, you know, again, you know, be playing shorthanded like this and 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 in the penalty box. I mean, uh the other night you know what the Flyers were on the penalty kill seven, seven times. times. Seven yeah. times. I mean, you can't <laughs> play like that and expect to make the playoffs. I'm not a coach. I'm not a GM. But that's true. Yeah, common sense. More yeah. in-depth analysis that you only get here on the Philly Hockey Guys <laughs> podcast. All right, now, well, for the third weekend in a row, uh, Flyers have a great opportunity to make up some ground the last two weekends yes, they do. have been complete failures but uh hopefully tonight in Montreal and then in Toronto tomorrow night to take on the Leafs 
Yeah, and those are two attainable wins. Like, those are four points that they can just go out and grab. I, like, they I can know, do it. Like, yeah. Come on. I know it's tough. I know they're on the road, but you're right. If you're a playoff team, you win these two games. You win them in regulation. You take the four points, and then you have Carolina next Tuesday, a team that you're trying to catch. So you you got to keep this going. Yeah, it's not even like a uh, four points would be nice type scenario. No, I mean, it's more like a necessity now. This is a do-or-die weekend in more ways than one. You're talking about the playoffs, but also uh, the trade deadline, less than two weeks away. We talked about it a little bit earlier. Uh, if they don't get four points this weekend, I think that makes Hextall a seller this Simmons going to be showing off for those Montreal <laughs> scouts tonight, bud. Hey, you know, uh, there's a lot of rumors out there that uh, PK is uh, potentially available. Yeah, and I've been hearing that I've, some people have already gone back on that, like people within Montreal. They're like, uh, I, I don't, don't know. know. He got blamed on. for the loss the other night in Montreal. Yeah, he did kind of get thrown under the bus yeah. for that. but Straight up, Simmons for PK. No, no. Uh, you're gonna say no to that? Oh man, I I don't think so. I don't know. I hate it. Yeah, <laughs> thank you, Elaine. I just think you really need to look Shut at up. trade. Uh, stop! Well, I'm trying to make a point all right, here. All right, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just saying that Simmons could bring you a lot in return. Shut up! You know, never mind. Shut your goddamn ass up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm leaving. That's it. I'm out. Wrap up the show yourself. Hey everyone, Ken's leaving. Please clap. So long. You're an ass. <laughs> Welcome to the Andy Podcast now. Now, come on back in here. We're almost done. So don't forget, uh, Saturday, right around the corner, as we talked about, uh, 10 a.m., Brian Prop is going to be doing an AMA on Reddit Flyers, and that is tremendously exciting. I hope he's more friendly than you are. <laughs> Shout out to the mods on uh, on Reddit Flyers and uh, all the people in that great community that made something so cool happen. And uh, speaking about cool things that Reddit Flyers does, uh, coming up, we're going to be talking about the Reddit Flyers Wells Fargo Center takeover. Uh, some of our friends and neighbors from Reddit Flyers, Reddit Rented out the Wells Fargo Center before a game, and they're all going to go down and uh, play some hockey on the ice. And uh, we might be talking to a 10 Philly fan organizer of it and uh, get a little bit more about this great Reddit Flyers event. It's awesome. Really cool. Let me ask you real quick before we get out of here. If uh, you could ask a question to Brian Prop, what would what would your question be? Why didn't you get us a cup? <laughs> Uh, there was no hesitation on that either. <laughs> everybody everybody who's played for the Flyers the last 40 years, that's the only question I have for them. Yes, hello, excuse me. <laughs> now, seriously, though, is that is that the question? No, I, I would want to know, uh, you know, one of the things is probably uh, greatest Flyers memory. Favorite thing about playing in Philadelphia? There's all kinds of questions we could ask. There we go. That's just a few. Yep, tomorrow morning, Reddit Flyers, 10 a.m. That is some exciting stuff. And don't forget, enter our contest. Contest? We have a contest going on? When this start? What are we giving away? We're giving away a prize pack. You already know this. Oh. Featuring the Eric Lindros figure. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. So uh, enter today. I already, I already did. I know you did. 17 times. I promptly threw all your entries in the trash. <laughs> but uh, enter today. You have through the entire month of February to enter the contest. Okay, so uh, games this weekend. Real quick before we wrap up, what are we, uh, what are we thinking? Uh, obviously, we ultimately want the four points out of it. Realistically, how do you feel about the Flyers' chances this weekend? I want the four points out of the weekend, uh, obviously. I want to see Ghost continue the scoring streak. Yes, um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, again, uh, Philadelphia sports is just so down right now, uh, that, you know, the Flyers are really our only hope of getting into the postseason. So, yeah, I, uh, I, I want to, I want to see this, this ride continue. So, uh, put a little bit more pressure on the teams in front of us. Yeah. So I like to see the Flyers, uh, win both these games as I always do. I think they win tonight three, one, and then, wow. uh, tomorrow I think, um, uh, uh you know what? I'm going to go b- both games. 3-1, actually. 3-1 for both games. Um, all right. That sounds pretty good. Uh, I don't really have a score prediction for it, but I, I agree. Those those small little you know facets I'd like to see. I'd like to see Ghost continue his streak. But most importantly, the points are the points. So it doesn't really matter how you get them. Just get them. Bring those points before me. <laughs> 
Wow, that that was all regal and like. <laughs> Did you like that? <laughs> that was that was very good. Thank you. So yeah, um, we'll be back uh, next week. We'll wrap up the uh, the weekend's games and a preview for you know what's coming next. We'll talk about the big trade to Scott Hartnell to Pittsburgh. We'll talk <laughs> not, about all that stuff. <laughs> we'll talk about all that stuff. All right, for Andy Rob, I'm Ken Prell. We are the Philly Hockey Guys. Have a great weekend, everybody, and we'll talk to you next week. Thanks for listening. Be sure to like the Philly Hockey Guys podcast page on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter at Philly Hockey Guy and subscribe on iTunes, TuneIn, and SoundCloud.